okay you can start now yes it's it's recording now all right students so first of all let's talk a little about this subject and uh, what are some of the strategies that you can use to ace this subject uh i believe from my understanding the english prescian composition paper is on on one hand it is about your fluency and about your familiarity with the english language and that part is tested through the synonyms antonyms idioms uh changing the voice changing the narration etc the prescian composition thing is more technical in my opinion it is not just about how good you are at speaking english it is more about your comprehension your writing skills your grammar your fluency your common sense in being able to connect ideas and organize ideas all of that is tested in prescian composition so i believe that this paper needs a very different strategy i believe there are two separate approaches needed here so usually my plan is that i always devise my course outline according to the needs of the class and this paper needs two different kinds of approaches one based on technique and comprehension the other based on basic language skills so this is how i plan to take along this course as well on the one hand we'll be focusing on the technique for prescy writing and for composition i'll give you some ideas on the basic techniques there are some three four methods of attempting the prescy i'll give you those whatever suits your learning method best you can opt for that and then i plan to have a lot more emphasis on these two components we will do them at the beginning then we will continue practicing these two components throughout the course because i feel that these are these two things are the epitome of having uh, english language proficiency if you are good at writing you can write a good prescy if you have a good understanding of the language you can write a good prescy so multiple skills are being tested there and that is why i think that we should spend more time on prescy and composition apart from that the other components are based more on uh, your familiarity or your exposure to the target language so for that part we will have practice i will share resources and i believe that in the very beginning we'll discuss a little on what to do if you don't have a uh, very good very proficient english language skills and how to improve those quickly what are the best ways to do that in a short time what does because i've been teaching it for a long time so we have a lot of discussions on that there are a lot of strategies methodologies for teachers over the years i've learned those and uh, i'll share with you some quick ways on how to learn english uh, quickly i can't say that i'm going to make your grammar perfect because that's a matter of practice but the more you practice i can promise you that the more you practice the target language the more you are familiar with its patterns and structures the more you will gradually notice yourself improving and the target here is please don't worry about the fact that your grammar is not perfect if it's not that is fine grammar is not perfect for most of the people that we interact with but they still manage to do pretty well in their lives so the thing is your target should be to to be able to communicate your point of view if you can do that in speaking in writing that is enough functionality if you can achieve that it is enough so this is what we would be striving for i'll share with you some strategies for improving your grammar what are some of the ways you can do that then i will share resources with you for grammar and composition then i plan to share with you some ideas on how to improve your vocabulary quickly because you know you can see from the last exam in uh, the english paper that the vocabulary can get a little out of hand in those exams so again we we'll practice some idioms common errors i believe are very important so we'll have a practice session on that as well 
how to make sure that you avoid the common errors in writing. Then when it comes to prescient composition, organization matters, connectivity of ideas matters. So these are some of the aspects that I have in mind and that I plan to share with you guys. Now, I want to talk a little about what we have uh, to offer here at PCI and why you should be opting for this institute. You have enough exposure to CSS preparation to know that there are several choices out there. There are several big and renowned institutes. I myself have been associated with some such institutes. They have their benefits as well. The problem is they are unable to dedicate specialized attention to their students. The number of students in those classrooms are such that the teacher cannot focus on students separately. This is one of the reasons I myself prefer a mode of interaction that is more uh, two ways. I will take your feedback I will base my course outline on that. Once we have a class and once we know who we are dealing with, I would like to know where you stand before I devise a course for you guys. So my plan is that this kind of setup, my hope is, my expectation is, this kind of setup is going to offer me a more individual centric approach so that I can interact more with students. Okay, and I always believe that teaching has to be based on feedback. Uh, and this is what I regularly do as well. I like to interact with my students. I like to get regular feedbacks from them so that I can devise my course or change the organization of it, the sequence of things accordingly. So this is something that I believe it's very important and it's meaningful. Any CSS preparation, that is not focused on individual needs because every student has an individual need, has an individual standing, individual level of proficiency. So I believe that any preparation that does not cater to that is not really meaningful. Any teaching experience is not meaningful if it's not based on what the students actually need, and where they actually stand. So this is something I'm hoping that I'll be able to achieve in this classroom and uh, this is the purpose here, that this is the purpose why we are here. Now, let's talk a little about how to ace the Pressy End composition paper. Like I said before, I'll be sharing some techniques and strategies with you. But my general advice to you would be to focus more on your functionality and your understanding. I always say this to students, Please stop worrying about your English language skills. Try to cultivate your mind. Try to take your mind as a garden that you have to cultivate, that you have to hone and prune and shape. And if you, if you make that effort, it will go a long way. It will help you a lot, not just in your written exam, but also in the interview. <clears throat> So there are some techniques for attempting the paper that I'll also share with you. There are some techniques for preparation. And uh, I believe comprehension is more important in all exams and in the interview part. So we'll talk a little about that as well, how you can improve that. For example, what is critical thinking? Why we need that? Is paper mein aapko, uh, critical thinking kaise chahiye When you will attempt the composition part, you need to be able to understand the passage in all its entirety. Then you need to understand the implied ideas that needs critical thinking. In composition paper, in the composition passage, everything is not stated. There are things that are implied, that are suggested, and meaning has to be constructed out of it, has to be squeezed out of it. So that is where your critical thinking, your comprehension skills will come in use. So I believe that the best way to go about preparation for this subject is that you <clears throat> take both things in order. Focus on the language components, but also on the comprehension part of it. 
So these are some things that we'll talk about. Then one thing that is very close to my heart is organization in writing or what is academic writing? So this is something I'll share with you, which will help you in all your other papers as well and for essay. So what is the course outline for this paper? Like I said before, I'll spend more time on um, comprehension part of it and the Prezi. I'll start with Prezi. This is my plan right now. Of course, I'll see how you people uh, are doing and how where you stand, what is your proficiency level before I give you this Prezi. This is a big chunk of the paper. So I'll see where you stand before I decide. General idea is in my mind that I'm going to start with Prezi. We'll move on to composition. And once we have done these two, then we'll keep on practicing them because they need more attention usually and they are more difficult to understand. Then I also, be, I, so, I also plan to have a session with you on grammar. I can share some resources with you that will help you gauge your own proficiency level that will help you diagnose where you stand, what are your common mistakes. And then I'll suggest some techniques to improve that, to improve those weaknesses and uh, how you can uh, overcome those weaknesses quickly. What is the aggregated wisdom on that, on the, on the part of English teachers? Then I plan to, I don't, uh, I don't plan to spend too much time on uh, grammar because that is something we have been learning all along. I think practicing is more important. So we'll move on to now applied parts. For example, uh, we'll move on to narration or change the voice. Move on to common errors. And then I put common errors to practice. So we will now, we will have a session uh, on uh, a couple of sessions on common errors because in English paper as well, you get those common errors and you have to correct them. Generally, I believe it's a good way to practice your language, uh, paying attention to common errors in writing. Those can be grammatical and those can be of organization as well. So we'll focus on that. And uh, I have gathered some resources for synonyms, antonyms. The best way to go is through the past papers. So I've started collecting those resources and I'll share those with you as well. Um, okay, let's talk about evaluation and feedback. I expect that if a teacher is spending energy and effort on the students, then I expect regular feedback from them. So be ready for a lot of work, for a lot of uh, home assignments. And uh, I expect you to promptly do those things. It is your time you'll be wasting if you don't do the assignments on time. So let's, let's make a commitment here that if you are a part of the class, you will be giving regular feedback. And I'll be giving you, I'll be checking those things I'll be regularly returning it to you that check <clears throat> all right another thing is that uh, i believe evaluation has to be not just for the whole class i believe that evaluation should be catered to each and every student my general technique with my students used to be that i would give one feedback for the whole class those are common mistakes that all students make. But at another level, I usually like to point out patterns for each student. For example, some people have a real issue with articles and that affects their clarity. Some people have an issue with prepositions, right? Those are the general common mistakes that they have. Some people have an issue with fragments. They write fragments, not complete sentences. They assume they are writing complete sentences. So I will. I like to point out certain patterns of English language for my students so that they can pay more attention to those particular mistakes. Of course, there are some mistakes that we all make and I'll point out that for the whole class, but there are certain quirks and certain patterns in each one of our, in each one of our, uh, our what should I say, what we produce, output that we produce in the language. So I like to point out those patterns as well. That is my plan for the evaluation part, for the feedback part. As for resources, some resources that I have collected are from the past papers. Some are compilations from standard books like Exploring the World of English. 
uh, some are resources available on the internet. There are some very good books of, over the internet written by foreign authors on synonyms or antonyms or how to build your vocabulary. There are also an international language testing, um, language tests, and I plan to get their lists as well. For example, there's Barron's 1100, and there's the GRE list. I expect you to memorize those because you can also see from the last few exams in English language that sometimes they like to give you a very um, far-fetched sort of vocabulary that a normal person doesn't really know. So it's better to memorize those things. It's better to be on the safe side. The good thing about your batch would be that you're starting well in time. So if you take this course and then you, when you, once you're done with it, you start your own preparation, you pick your own pace, and then you can keep on practicing that. The good thing about your batch is going to be that you are going to have a lot of time to practice it. So it will be easier to set a base for you guys on which you can then <clears throat> keep on building. All right. I believe I have uh, communicated to you the basics of our orientation session. If you have any questions, let's have a 10, 15 minute Q&A session. And uh, please feel free to ask your questions. For those who came late, I'm going to introduce myself one more time so you can, um, you can shape your questions accordingly. My name is Anam Babur. I have been teaching English for the past seven years. I cleared CSS exam in 2019. I stood first in KPK and eighth all over Pakistan. So now I belong to the Pakistan Administrative Service. And um, I think that's it. That's what really, that's what relevant to you guys. I have a master, sorry, I have an MPhil in English literature and an MPhil in IR. So I think that is also something that you should know, you should keep in mind. Hanzi, any questions now? You can raise your hand and I can go to the list of participants or you can unmute yourself. Usually students have a lot of misgivings about the English paper. I just like to say here, it's no mystery. It's no rocket science. If you follow a good strategy, if you're willing to invest enough time and effort into it, you don't have to be afraid of English. What we lack is not uh, language skills only. What we lack are basic academic, basics of academic writing. I think those are more problematic not knowing how to organize your writing, how to brainstorm, and uh, how to stay on track, how to keep yourself relevant. That's more of a problem, I think, for our students. Anam, uh, what are your views about uh, this paper, which we are talking about, that synonyms, antonyms, and these are very difficult times. So how, you know, to tackle this problem? My point of view is that if you are prepared well enough, usually you are able to surpass these hurdles. Look, there is no way that the exam can be predicted. And uh, what you can do is prepare as thoroughly as possible. I can tell you for a fact that in many of the papers in 2019, the papers were unexpected. One example, one clear example is the paper of political science. It's about theory and uh, political science paper two is about constitutions. But we did not get that. Papers were very unexpected. They seemed more like Pakistan affairs papers. So you should be prepared enough to make something of what you get at that moment when there is no other way where there's no other choice, you should be prepared well enough to make the best of it in the exam. This is my point of view. Exams are often unexpected. Uh, I think if you have command over your subject, it's not a problem then. Yes, anything else from those people who just arrived?
I think uh, we don't have uh, questions. आपको सुनना चाहते हैं. Some question from Abbas Khan. जी जी. Can he unmute himself? I think uh, uh, Abbas Khan asked you that according to you, what what is the most important thing for essay preparation? Essay preparation. Hmm. For me, it's not just language. Essay, I don't think, is at all about language. For essay, you need to have a good scheme of organization. I wouldn't say there's one important thing. I would say there are three important things. Your scheme of organization is important. Sirf knowledge ko apne scatter nahi kar dena across the page. It has to be well structured. It has to be organized. Secondly, it needs to be relevant. Thirdly, it needs to be logically sound. ठीक है? So अगर आपके sound arguments नहीं हैं, अगर आप logically flow में नहीं चल रहे, अगर आपकी writing organized नहीं है, if any of these is lacking, then you can't perform well in the essay paper. English is not an ingredient there, not an essential ingredient there. Functionality is. अगर आप communicate कर पाते हैं आपके point of view. That is enough, right? But there are three things you need for writing a good essay: organization, sound arguments, and it should be well structured. Hanji, another question by Mohsen, I believe. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Wa alaikum salam, Ji Mohsen. Uh, ma'am, uh, am I clear to you? Yes, you're audible. Okay, ma'am. Uh, I have an issue uh, to the back over here. I have uh, appeared in uh, 2021 just recently in uh, CSS. I have a mm -hmm. uh, few issues. I have faced few issues over there. As mm -hmm. one of our US student was uh, just, he is just asking that uh, what is the cornerstone of uh, writing and good essay. I have faced uh, few problems over there. For example, I have. Uh, Uh, material over there i have uh, uh, excess vocabulary over there but as you are saying that uh, uh, you know organization uh, the thing which i have said that uh, you have a lot uh, lack of time over there and you have to organize all of the things in a very shorter time for that purpose you need to uh, practice uh, more and more which uh, I, i which was my uh, weak area and what you uh, recommend it it would be obviously you will say that uh, to do more and more practice and to give more exams uh, so for that uh, are you will be available there uh, what is your recommendations uh, thank you i'll certainly be available i just like to remind you that i'm teaching english pressy and composition i think for sa we have another gentleman from my batch uh, so yes this is our strategy this is our motto basically to give feedback as frequently as possible and like i said before we believe in individualized attention i as a teacher believe in individualized attention and i like to cater my course to according to the needs of the students this is my philosophy of teaching uh whoever teaches you essay yes i can guarantee that giving feedback regular feedback will be a part of it otherwise learning is compromised okay there are a couple of questions in chat too i believe i'll just read out the question for you guys so you know what we are talking about uh, a student is asking that he has a problem with vocabulary and he wants me to suggest some specific sources for vocabulary and should we go through the dictionary completely no you don't have to go through the dictionary like i mentioned there are some resources there are some international testing services and they also have lists of vocabulary published then there is also css specific vocabulary you can learn something from past papers for example and um, sometimes in the objective part especially objective part of the paper past questions past synonyms antonyms etc get repeated so yes i can share resources with you 
and we can set it, uh, set aside some time. By the way, interestingly, there are also there are also some strategies for improving your vocabulary quickly. There's a theory in language learning about it. So I'll try to share those with you, and I'll try to share some practices with you as well, which will help you in learning vocabulary quickly. Uh, the first thing you need to do is you can go for Barron's 1100 list or you can go for the GRE list, right? This is the thing you can start with. Dictionary ko yaad karne ka na soche. I think on the safer side, in, in list ko karne na bhi bohat hai. Aur aap most repeated words dekh le, unki list agar aapko mil zati hai, wo aap kar le. Thik hai? What I can do for you is, I will share some strategies in class and some practices. Because I feel that languages learn more quickly through practice, through interaction in that target language, through output, then uh, by memorizing or absorbing things. Okay. Uh, and one of them was asking uh, what you will teach. Uh, so, Madam will teach English pressy and composition. Yes, I just saw the question and I was wondering, uh, maybe he missed the session. But basically, I'll be teaching English pressy and composition. And, but you can book that you can read any book in Master Grammar. Then you will think, what will I read Like I said before, if you're not practicing it, if you're not getting feedback on it, you need guided learning. For example, pressy up gar bed ki das pressy licklinge. Koito wana jaku batai ki pressy ki technique. What is the best way to go about it? Like I said before, I've been teaching English for seven years, and then I cleared my CSS in 2019. So I can tell you both sides of the picture. That is what I'll be teaching. English ke generally kya strategies improve karne ki. CSS specific approaches kya hai? This, this is what I will do. But the duration and timing depends on the class, depends on the uh, PSI admin, depends on the needs of the students, depends on their proficiency. Okay? So ye abhi ye finalize nahi hoi. Something will be shared with you soon once you register for the course. Hanji, anything else? Students are still coming in, although we are near to the close of the session. And next session is about current affairs. So yes, that's an important one. When does it start, uh, Ms. Umbreen? Uh, at seven o'clock. All so right. Must you no raise your hand? Then... Gee, sorry. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I think Mawson raised his hand. Mawson, do you have something to ask? Let me unmute, unmute you. Hanji Mawson. Assalamu alaikum, ma'am. Wa alaikum salam. अच्छा मैम आपने प्रेसी का पेपर तो देखा होगा आप मुझे अभी पता चला कि आप प्रेसी और कंपोजिशन पढ़ाएंगे तो सो दैट्स व्हाई आई जस्ट केम टू नो राइट नाउ अच्छा तो ऐसा था कि जैसे ही प्रेसी का जो वो फर्स्ट ऑब्जेक्टिव पार्ट हमारे पास आया तो सभी स्टूडेंट्स को तो पसीने छूट गए थे उसमें बिकॉज़ आपने भी देखा होगा कि उसमें तो हार्डली मुझे एक या दो वर्ड आते थे तो तो उसमें क्योंकि उस नेक्स्ट टाइम भी वो शॉक कर सकता है मैं उसमें इडियम्स भी देख लें आप मतलब कि वो भी बिल्कुल हट के आप इडियम सॉरी कह रहा हूं कि वो जो आपके वर्ड्स थे आपके वो भी अब मतलब कि से हट के थे रूटीन से तो उसमें आपकी क्या स्ट्रेटजी होगी कि हम दोबारा से पसीने ना उस तरीके से छूटे हमारे थैंक यू देखिए इसको हल करने का जो तरीका मुझे आता है ना वो ये है कि आप अपनी प्रिपरेशन इतनी साउंड रखें कि आप शॉक ना हो एक मैं आपको बता दूं वोकैबुलरी के बारे में 
اس میں کوئی گارنٹی نہیں ہے کہ آپ کو کس طرح کے ورڈز آتے ہیں یہ جو ورڈز لگ رہے ہیں نا یہ جو ورڈز آئے اگر آپ کو لگ رہا ہے کہ آپ کو نہیں آتے تھے دیٹس اے بیڈ تھنگ میرا مجھے لگتا ہے کسی کو بھی نہیں آتے تھے کسی نارمل انسان کو یہ لفظ آنے ہی نہیں چاہیے انلیس وہ ڈکشنری لکھ رہا ہے انگلش پہ بہرحال میرا پوائنٹ آف ویو یہ ہے کہ پیپر بیلنسڈ ہوتا ہے میرے ٹائم پہ مجھے یاد ہے دو ہزار انیس کے پیپر میں کہ اگر پریسی مشکل تھی تو کمپوزیشن آسان تھی ٹھیک ہے اگر وکیبلری مشکل آئی تھی تو کچھ کمپوننٹس کمپنسیٹ کرنے کے لیے بھی تھے تو وہ آپ کے لینگویج سکلس کہیں نہ کہیں سے سامنے آ جاتے ہیں ان کے اور وہ وہاں آپ کو فیل کرنے کے نہیں بیٹھے ہوتے اگر آپ ڈیمونسٹریٹ کرتے ہیں کہ آپ کو بیسک لینگویج پروفیشنسی ہے اور بیسک کمپریہنشن سکلس ہیں آپ کے یو کین کلیئر دا سبجیکٹ رہی بات اس کی کہ کنٹینجنسی میجر کیا ہے سپوز کہ ایسا پیپر دوبارہ سے آ جاتا ہے تو کنٹینجنسی میجر یہ ہے کہ وکیبلری کو ایز تھورلی ایز ہیومنلی پاسبل کور کیا جائے ٹھیک ہے ڈفرینٹ ریسورس کول کر کے میرا پوائنٹ آف ویو یہ ہے کہ میں ڈفرینٹ ریسورس کول کر کے پاسٹ پیپرس کو دیکھ کے آپ سے شیئر کروں گا آپ کے اینڈ سے کیا ریکوائرڈ ہے کہ آپ اس کو گو تھرو کریں آپ لوگوں کو یہ بہت بڑا فائدہ ہے کہ آپ جلدی اسٹارٹ کریں تیاری ٹھیک ہے رائٹ آفٹر دا ایگزام یو ہیو ون ہول ایئر ناؤ یہ چیزیں اس ٹائم پہ کرنا زیادہ پاسبل ہوتا ہے ابھی سے بیٹھ کے ایڈیم یاد کرنا ابھی سے بیٹھ کے وکیبلری بلڈ کرنا زیادہ پاسبل ہوتا ہے ایگزام کے قریب جا کے جو لوگ کرتے ہیں نا یہ کوشش اس میں یہ ہوتا ہے کہ آپ کے پاس یو ہیو ٹو فوکس آن دا مور امپورٹنٹ ایسپیکٹ آف اے پیپر فار دس پیپر دیٹ از پریسی اینڈ کمپوزیشن تو پھر آپ کے لیے نا یہ میموریزیشن والی چیزوں کا ٹائم بھی بچتا ہے تو پریپریشن جو ہے وہ پھر آپ کو ابھی سے بیس جو بلڈ کرنی ہے نا یو کین اسٹارٹ فرام دیٹ فرام دس ٹائم ٹھیک ہے میرا کیا اس کے لیے اسٹریٹجی اگر آپ نے پوچھی میری اسٹریٹجی ہے کہ میں آپ سے ریسورسز ڈائیورس شیئر کروں ٹھیک ہے چانسز آف بینگ سرپرائز ان دس بروٹل مینر شوڈ بی منیمائز لمنیٹ تو ہوتے نہیں ہیں کبھی سرپرائز تو آپ کو دے سکتے ہیں نا ایف پی ایس سی والے کبھی بھی لیکن ہم یہ کر سکتے ہیں کہ اپنی تیاری اچھی کر لیں ہم ہم ملٹیپل سورسز سے پڑھ لیں ٹھیک ہے اور ہم کوشش کریں کہ ہم اپنا جو بیس ہے وہ اچھی کر لیں لینگویج کی تاکہ ہمیں اگر ایک پیپر کا سائڈ ایسی آ بھی جاتی تو ہم کہیں اور کمپنسیٹ کر لیں اسے ٹھیک ہے دس از واٹ آئی بلیو آل رائٹ آئی تھنک یو ہیو این ادر سیشن ناؤ سو آئی اسٹاپ ہیئر اف یو ہیو این ادر کوشچن یو کین آسک می ایک چلے آخری کوشچن ایڈریس کر لیتے ہیں وچ از اباؤٹ جسٹ گیو می منٹ ایک کوشچن آپ نے پوچھا کہ وہ میں آپ سے کر دیتی ہوں کہ آپ کو کتنا ٹائم لگا بچے یہ والا سوال نہ پوچھا کریں آپ کیونکہ ڈزنٹ ریلی میٹر مجھے ٹائم لگا فرض کریں تین چار مہینے ٹھیک ہے اس کی وجہ تھی آئی واز آلریڈی ٹیچنگ آپ کا ٹائم جو لگے گا نا دیٹ شوڈ بی اسپیسیفک ٹو یو دیٹ شوڈ بی اسپیسیفک ٹو یور اسٹرینگس اینڈ یور ویکنیسز رائٹ تو وہ آپ کے حساب سے ہوگا تیاری کیسے کرنی ہے یہ میں آپ کو بتا سکتی ہوں پیس کیا رکھنی ہے یہ آپ کا اپنا ڈسیزن ہوگا پھر ٹھیک ہے so i wish you best of luck for the next session and for your preparation and uh, i'll see you all in the class inshallah some other day thank you so much anam so informative thank you so much thank you miss amreen have a good day allah hafiz you allah hafiz